YouTube, welcome to another very exciting uh, Andrew Kramer-esque beginning to a GIMP know-how tutorial. And in this tutorial, we will be using GIMP to uh, make this 2010 uh, clockwork text effect in honor of the new year, of course. Um, just like to draw attention to my amazing new YouTube background. Actually, I'm, I'm being too conceited. It, it's a new YouTube background I made. And... Um, yeah, I actually got inspired by this by the distribution Linux Mint. So if you want to uh, know where I got the color scheme and stuff, that is all because of Linux Mint, a distribution of Linux as the name Linux Mint would suggest. Anyway, let's get on with the tutorial. All right, so uh, what I've done is that I opened up a new image, 640 by 400 standard size, and I'm going to grab the text tool and use the font Optima Heavy. And if you don't have that, you can use any font, it's fine. So I'm going to type in 2. Uh, for the beginning of 2010. And uh, now I'm going to make the base uh, border for it. So I'm going to right click on the layers tab on the two and click alpha to selection. Now I'm going to, <coughs> actually I'm just going to take the gradient tool and using the gradient golden, which can be found like right by uh, greens, uh, I'm just going to stroke down a golden gradient and this will be our base border. Now I'm going to click select shrink and I'm going to shrink the selection by three. This will effectively allow me to open up an image into the selection and have this border still be there. So I went file open as layers and then selected this mechanical image to be open. You can find the link in the description. Now since we already have the two selected uh, three borders shrunk, of, uh, three pixels shrunk of course, I'm going to move the two to a relatively mechanical part of the image and then I'm going to uh, right click on the image and add an alpha channel. Then I'm going to click select invert, edit, cut, select, none. And what this has done is it has allowed me to make this three inches, uh, three pixels smaller than the border. Now I'm going to alpha to selection this and then click edit cut on the bottom layer. You'll find out why this is important in a second. So basically all I've done, and I'm moving that layer above. So basically all I've done is just made a three pixel border around here. Now I'm going to go script foo layer effects bevel and emboss. Now don't worry if you don't have this, I'll have the link in the description along with a link to a video of how to install it. So I'm going to choose the mode inner bevel with the depth set at 2 and the size set at 1 and everything else left at default. This should give you a nice beveled border. So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to end up with two layers about like this. So I'm going to right click and then click merge down. And now we have the bevel on one border and you can go ahead and merge that down one further. So we just have the whole border on one layer. Uh, now what I need to do is alpha to selection this layer again, the inside, and make a new layer and fill that layer in completely with black. Now click select shrink by four pixels, then click edit, cut, select, none. Now alpha to selection this bottom layer again and click filters, blur, gaussian blur. I'm going to blur it by about nine select none and what we've done is we've made it look like this is we've added a bit of depth where there is a shadow on the end of the border <coughs> uh, so now we have our base letter completed and we be can begin adding uh, tidbits as it were uh, the first main tidbit uh, I guess you could say as I'm adding is I'm going uh, I'm going to go file open as layers and I'm going to open up that same mechanical image and what I'm going to do is move that to the very top layer first and then take the circle tool and select this one. Now I'm going to add another alpha channel to this, then click select invert, and then select feather, which basically blurs the selection a little bit by one, then click OK. Now I'm going to click edit, cut, and basically all we've done is just cut out this one. Uh, now I'm going to go layer, auto crop layer, just so I can, ma oh actually, never mind, auto crop layer won't work, but still, uh, just so I can manage it a little easier. And so I'm going to uh, size this down a little bit, click OK, and that's why auto crop wouldn't work. Um, just delete any excess. Alright, now I'm going to move this and I'm going to move it below both the shadow and the uh, underline so it looks like it is in the two. The next thing I'm going to add to the two is the last thing we're going to add to the two coincidentally. We're going to go file, open as layers, and open up the same image again. 
and this time I'm going to scale it down some so we don't have that problem that we had before. About like this. And I'm going to commence cutting out this little um, clock hand. So zoom in, go ahead and just take the free selection tool or the pass tool, whichever you prefer, and begin making a polygonal selection around it until you have a, uh, a selection. So now I have my selection. I didn't bother to select inside of these because it'll all blend anyway. And now I'm going to click select invert and then just click edit cut select none and <clears throat> uh, it's a pretty rough cut but you know it's okay for our purposes um, so I'm going to move this above the uh, two main layer but I'm going to move it below um, the border and this doesn't look quite right so uh, first what I'm going to do is erase the edges over here that are sticking out we don't want those uh, secondly what I'm going to do is take the free select tool and this parts a little bit confusing and I'm going to select everywhere that should be above this area. Now I'm going to click Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste, and make that a new layer. And basically what this does is it gives us the illusion that it starts below and moves above, which is what we want. So uh, the two is finished. Now do uh, now we're just going to go File, Open as Layers, and Open Up your clock. So here I've opened my clock and I'm just going to right click add an alpha channel then start scaling it down with the change checked so as not to lose its um, aspect ratio. And so I've scaled down the clock to about what I want it and I'm going to take the uh, circle select tool and just select around the clock. Doesn't have to be perfect just fairly rough. Now, now I'm going to click select feather by one which blurs the selection then click select invert edit cut select none so here we have our clock it's not a very good cut but no oh well I'm going to move it uh, slightly uh, behind the two and now I'm going to uh, alpha to selection this uh, make a new layer above the clock behind the two uh, fill it in with uh, black uh, click select none then I'm going to alpha to selection the clock and select the two layer, then click filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm just basically making a shadow on the clock for where the two is to give more aspects of depth. Uh, the only things we have to, left to do with the clock are to go colors, color balance, uh, make it slightly more yellow, maybe add a little red in there for a goldish tinge. Now take the circle select tool, make a selection around like this on the clock make a new layer above the clock. Take your gradient tool with white, set it on FG to transparent, and stroke down. This will just give the cl uh, clock a little more orb look. I did the one so far in the exact same way I did the two. I just used a bit different selection uh, from the same picture. So if you need to find out how to do the one, refer back to part two just to save time. Uh, <clears throat> so um, on this one I'm going to merge down the bevel and emboss layers which I forgot to do and um, I also forgot to alpha selection and edit cut to add the border alright so um, alright so uh, as I was saying oh yeah uh, tidbits for the one the only tidbit I want to add to the one is a grandfather clock so I'm going to go file open as layers and here is the clock where's the clock there it is. And you're going to need to add an alpha channel to this, scale it down about to the size of the one. So I'm going to go to about here. And uh, have fun rendering. So you need to get out the paths tool and start rendering again. After you get your grandfather clock rendered out successfully, place it right here because uh, I find it looks pretty good there. <clears throat> Uh, now we're going to do uh, the same thing that we did with the 2 and the 1 with the O, uh, except instead of the other image we're using, we're going to conversion over to this image. It's like infinite clockworks there. Um, and you want to grab something right around in this area. So yeah, go ahead and do that. 
Alright, uh, <clears throat> we are in the final stages of the tutorial. If you followed me this far, congratulations. I'll, I'm high-fiving my screen right now. Um, I actually seriously high-five my screen. Anyway, uh, the only thing we're going to add to the circle is a big gear from the same image that you made the background out of. So I'm going to go File, Open as, oops, open as Layers and open up that infinite clockwork. And the particular gear I'm going to look for in this one, first I'm going to scale it down a little bit. And just move it to the top for convenience. The particular gear I'm going to look for is this one right here. So go ahead and zoom in, get out your free select tool, and have fun. Once you have the outside of this cutout, I'm going to take the circle select tool and put the select mode on subtract. And now I'm going to subtract out each of these uh, holes in uh, the gear. So do that. Uh, once you have the gear perfectly selected, or not perfectly, doesn't really matter at all. Uh, we're going, uh, it matters a little bit, but I'm not going to contradict myself now. Uh, we're going to go select feather by one pixel just to smooth the edges, and then click select invert, and edit, cut, select none. Alright, so uh, we're going to move this to the center of the O, and as I'd imagine, uh, yes, it happened. Uh, we're just going to edit, cut any excess that happens to come on. And that's because instead of deleting, I just cut and it's really annoying. Uh, because Max can't cut and da 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 da. Alright, so we're going to duplicate this layer, alpha to selection it. And then uh, on your fill bucket tool, click fill whole selection and fill this in with black. And then click select none. Now on this layer, we're just going to go filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And for all of you people who are going to type, ha ha ha, you just could have used drop shadows, well, yeah, script, script foos for sissies. Anyway, uh, so now we're almost, almost, almost done, and you should have like a bajillion layers. Um, we're going to go file, uh, open as layers, and we're going to open a uh, screw, and this screw is one I got from sxc.hu, I borrowed the idea from S Glider's uh, ornate typography tutorial, so I'm going to definitely scale this down quite a bit. So yeah, continue scaling this down. Oh, and by the way, when I said the ha 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 drop shadow, I was doing the uh, Ray William Johnson troll impersonation, just, just so you know what I was doing. Is that relevant to the tutorial at all? Absolutely not, but you know, you know it works. So once you have your screw down to an adequate size, we're just going to take the circle tool and the mode set on normal again. Uh, just cut it out real quick. Okay, not a perfect cut, but no one cares. So, I'm going to move the screw behind the two, because I want the shadow to, like, appear over it. Duplicate the screw, move it to other places. Oops, need to move that above the arm. Actually, I think I don't like that screw there, I'm moving it up here. Nah, I don't like that screw at all. Duplicate this. You know, keep on placing the screws where you think they should go. And move that above. Alright, so we are finally nearing the end of our great journey. Uh, we're just going to uncheck the background layer. Oh dear, I must have done that with the paintbrush tool rather than the eraser tool. That is wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful. All right, oh, where is that? There you are. We're just gonna take the eraser tool and fix that up real quick. Okay, uh, so <clears throat> I'm going to use the gradient metallic something as the background. And actually, I'm going to go uh, image, 
merge visible layers and that's why we made the background invisible because we don't want the background merged with it just yet so uh, now for the background I'm going to use uh, the gradient metallic something and because I don't want this big chunk of black at the top of the screen um, I'm just going to stroke down whoops I'm just going to stroke down about like that now I'm going to go uh, duplicate this layer alpha to selection it fill it in with black select none fill there's blur gaussian blur and if gimp is intent on being an idiot by not deleting things past the edge of the screen which is probably a preference i can turn on somewhere uh, i'm just going to select around the 2010 text click select invert then click edit cut to get us a more natural look. All right, <clears throat> so now we have the background, all the shadows in place. Now we're going to go layer, new from visible, and I'm going to take uh, this blend tool, and I'm going to find the gradient golden. I'm going to click uh, colors map gradient map. And I'm going to set this layer mode on overlay just to give everything a nice yellow color and on this one I'm going to go uh, this layer I'm going to go colors hue saturation tone down the saturation a little bit alright now we're still not done <coughs> we need to go um, oh yeah we need to go file open as layers open up the final texture which is right here set this on overlay and then duplicate it and yay you're done pat yourself on the back you made a pretty cool looking 2010 typography piece so congratulations do whatever you do after you complete something big and thanks for watching subscribe if you like this tutorial why would you subscribe if you didn't so you probably wouldn't even get this far if you didn't and uh, anyway yeah so yeah this is Gimp know how thanks for watching